Hey everybody, Jim the Tabletop Engineer here and welcome to a new episode. I am continuing on with my game table. Uh, I do a little bit at a time, mainly because here in the basement right now, it's hot. Uh, it's 99 degrees outside in Atlanta today and in my basement it's not too much cooler. Um, I'm going to have to do something, probably get a, uh, an air conditioning unit installed or something. But it's hot and uh, I've got a lot, not a lot, I've got a little bit more to do on the table. So um, in this video, I'm going to work today on the top part and get it put together. Now I'm not going to put the top and the bottom together yet because I want to sand them and then paint them separately. And I have like a, uh, a paint sprayer gun, whatever you call it, uh, that should make that pretty quick. I want to paint the bottom white and the top part black and then mount them together. So what I'm gonna do in this video is uh, attach the top frame to the two pieces of plywood. And I bought some of these um, L brackets and you'll see shortly, I'm gonna use those to, uh, to connect the plywood. So let's get to the workshop, I'm already here, and uh, let's get this top part done. All right, so right now I have the bottom of the game table plus the legs made. Uh, in the previous video, you saw me put this together. Now, this is going to be flipped upside down, so this will actually be the bottom. So some of these screws that I put in, they're not actually um, recessed. Uh, they're, they're not actually even flush necessarily with the, with the top, but that doesn't matter because, like I said, this is going to be facing down. So um, one of the things I was kind of worried about was... All right, the legs are made of two pieces of two by four that are put together. And I was trying to be very careful in cutting them all to the exact length because if just one or two of those pieces is slightly off in length, you're gonna end up with a table that rocks. And fortunately, this does not rock. I have a level here, I'll take a picture of it. I mean, it is dead on level right now. So what does that tell me? It tells me the legs are the right length. They're all matching. So hopefully when I flip this part over and put the top on it, that top will also be level. Now, if I should, what I'm going to do is I'm going to test fit it. And if I find that it's slightly off, I can use what are called shims, which are these little pieces of wood. They're sort of triangular, kind of like a stock that you would put under a door. You can buy them in, in different sizes. And what you can do is you can put some shims in there until it is level. But I'm really not worried about it because right now, like I said, this thing is so stable. Um, I, I did it right. So obviously when you're cutting the legs, you wanna make sure all of those legs are the exact same length. If one of them is off, get a handsaw or a power tool and trim it so that it's the same length as all the other legs. Now. What am I gonna do next? Well, in just a moment, you're gonna see. I'm gonna take the top of this, which is just right now the frame. I'm gonna add the two pieces of plywood. Uh, each piece is uh, two by four, two feet by four feet and a half inch thick. I'm gonna attach that to the, uh, the frame, but I'm not gonna do it like this. I'm not gonna use screws in, in, the, in the surface because I want that tabletop to be totally smooth and not have any screws or any holes in it. So how am I gonna do it? I have these L brackets right here. I have 12 of them. And basically what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to lay the frame flat on the ground. And you'll see all this in the, in the upcoming video. I'm gonna lay the frame flat. And then in various places, I'm gonna put an L bracket into the frame and secure it with two screws. Then what I'm going to do is slide the plywood underneath or actually just lay it down on the ground and put the frame on top. I'll square it up and then I'll drill two more screws into the L bracket to attach the L brackets to the top of the plywood. That should secure the top to the frame. So up next, I'm going to take the top frame, put it down and attach the L bracket. All right, there you go, top part done. Well, 
what's that phrase, uh, plan never survives when it meets the enemy, something along those lines. <clears throat> so here's what I did. Um, I meant to mount the frame to the plywood using these L brackets. And it worked. Uh, it was it, it was solid and it connected. Now I did have to use two different types of screws. I used um, I used one and a quarter for screwing into the uh, frame uh, from the side. Screwing into the the half inch plywood, I had to use um, three eighths uh, three eighth screws so that they didn't puncture through the plywood. So once I did that, I stood it up, and then I realized that. Even though I bought these two pieces of plywood flat, there was a little bit of warping, and that's that's just half inch plywood. If it was one inch, there probably would not have been much warping, but the half inch, there was some warping. So when I was looking at it from the side, you could see where the L brackets were holding it, but then the edges were like either mismatched or whatever. So I did what I wanted to avoid, which was basically screwing in screws from the top into the frame. Does it bother me? A little bit. I don't like to have the screws visible, but I did I did push them down. I didn't countersink them. The, the screwdriver naturally did it. It's a soft piece of plywood, only half inch. So all the screws on the top are sunk in, um, which, you know, that's okay. I This is the first time building a, a game table like this or a workbench type and uh, learn something new. So I think if I were to do it differently or diff or if I could do it over, I think I probably would have bought more of the L brackets. I only bought 12 and I used all 12, but I think I would have bought more and put two in each corner to pull the corners of the plywood down, which is where they were bowing up. So no big deal. I guess I could have gone to the hardware store and grabbed some more, but um, I just, I want to get it done. I want to get this thing done so that I can paint it, put it together and start playing on it. And um, it's so close. So in the next video, sanding, sanding and painting. I think I'm gonna just combine those two videos. The sanding is gonna take a while. If you've ever done sanding on plywood or two by fours, it's not the, it's, it's horrible. I mean, I just hate sanding. I don't know any carpenter or anybody who works and in, in does this kind of thing that enjoys sanding. It is not peaceful. Uh, it requires head, you know, head ear protection because it's loud and it's, it's hot and I can't do it in the workshop. I'm gonna have to do it outside. So um, hopefully tomorrow it won't rain, but if it doesn't rain, that means it's probably gonna be 99 degrees outside again, but that's okay. Don't mind a little sweat when, I, uh, when I'm working. Anyway, this is Jim, the Tabletop Engineer. Thank you for joining me as I build out my gaming table. I'll be back tomorrow with another part of this project. We're getting close, hang with me. See y'all tomorrow, take care. Each month, Bexham's Bazaar RPG and Wargaming Magazine provides gamers with articles, props to print and cut out for players, mini adventures, new monsters, and much more. Look in the description below for details on how to get a few free issues so you can see what you're missing.